growing up was fun, growing up was exciting because uh, I grew up most, um, well, I grew up often next to a vicarage because my father was a, a minister and uh, we were highly creative and highly social and uh, a lot of friends, a lot of family friends, because uh, we'd have congregations that would, uh, that would be with us. Um, but it was fun because, you know, a very creative family. So I remember one thing is that my mother had was a dress-up basket. So she would always add to it. It was this big round, you know, kind of cylinder. Uh, and uh, so we were never bored because if someone was bored, you'd sort of run to the dress-up basket. You'd pop the lid and, you know, pull something out and dress up as a character and uh, I have a younger brother and sister so I would always be trying to fool them. Uh, I think the best one was one Easter. Uh, I actually got up um, extra early before my brother and sister were awake and I dressed up. I pulled one of these costumes out of the basket which my mother would refill so you'd always have a new costume in there. I pulled out an Easter bunny, ra a rabbit, and I dressed up as a rabbit and I pretended to be the Easter Bunny, and so when I got up early, I ran past my brother and sister's doorway just enough so that they might see the tail or something to try and fool them into thinking that the Easter Bunny was real, and they actually bought it, so that was kind of fun. <laughs> the first movie that had profound impact on me was, in fact, An American Werewolf in London. I was roughly eight, nine years old, something like that, maybe ten. Um, and I'd seen a lot of horror films prior to that, uh, a lot of black and white silent films. And I think American Wolf in London was one of the first horror films I saw in colour. And I remember watching it at my uncle's place. Uh, it must have been a, a Christmas gathering or something like that, and while everyone was celebrating, I snuck out into the rumpus room and put this big VHS tape into the machine and it was American Wolf in London. Uh, I loved the blood and the gore, which had a, a real impact uh, for me. But also, uh, about halfway through, it got to a pretty heated sex scene. In fact, it was a shower sex scene. And this was the first time I'd seen a sex scene on film. Uh, and at that point, uh, my mother obviously twigged and she came running into the room and she tried to cover up my eyes. <laughs> So I was like, why can't I watch this, trying to pull her hands away? You know, she didn't want a kid to see uh, this scene, which uh, obviously the movie was uh, rated R, and I was, uh, you know, I was quite young. So, um, but that stayed with me. TV shows, when I was a child, I think I was pretty big on ABC, so it was Monkey Magic, Doctor Who, uh, really obscure shows, one called Wurzel Gummidge, and another one was Cat Weasel. I used to love these really obscure, you know, English-produced shows. But I was a big fan of Prisoner. I, was just, I used to watch it religiously, you know, every night. And it was on pretty late. And, uh, again, I think ratings-wise, I probably shouldn't have been watching this show. But I had a portable television, you know, and I just had it sat, sat at the end of the bed and I'd watch it no matter what time. And I just, you know, if someone came in the room, I'd say, piss off, I'm watching Prisoner. I think I watched the whole thing. Um... And, you know, I guess it's kind of shaped a, a little bit of the way I think directing-wise because if you look at Tomboys, it's very much like that. It's a group of really nasty women all stuck in a kind of prison-like um, set, <laughs> you know, all hacking away at each other, which was what Prisoner was like. Um, so that was, that was, yeah, that was definitely one of the favourites. Favourite police cop movie is actually a film called Cop, which, uh, which stars James Woods. It's an old 80s film. Uh, I particularly liked it because it's a genre film, independent, low budget, but done exceptionally well. It's one of those independent films where you just feel like, even though there was a low budget, it checked every box, and he gave a brilliant performance of a, a tortured detective uh, on the hunt for a serial killer. Uh, and it was, it was readily found on VHS, but I, I don't think I've ever seen it on DVD. It's extremely hard to get, even in this country. And every time I ask someone if they've seen it, they, they can't find it. Um, so it was one of those like obscure films that, you know, me as a, as a movie buff and as a director would, would always be searching for, as those little gem films. So I'd probably say Cop. I really admire Jack Nicholson. I think he's uh, one of the great real actors. He has an extensive filmography way before he became famous as such. 
Uh, I don't think it was until The Shining that the world really stood up and noticed him, uh, which was also at a, a pivotal time in his life where he was going through a very hard time uh, with his family and, and, and skeletons were coming out of the closet, a lot of family demons, and that seemed to be uh, when he peaked. Um, I do... I do like him because I think he's one of the only actors in Hollywood that's balding and still sexy. Um, uh, he's just such a personality, and he represents one of you know one of the great uh, one of the great actors who who is so engrossed in a character and always first and foremost puts the acting first first before the box office, even though obviously his box office success is extraordinary. That's one of my favourite actors. My most challenging role was in the first horror film I acted in. Uh, it was a Richard Lehman story. Richard Lehman, for people who don't know, is sort of like the, the B-grade Stephen King. And we got permission from him to, to shoot, which was going to be the first Richard Lehman film ever. And as soon as we got a green light, he died. Uh, but we continued on. We spoke to his wife and we decided to make the film, uh, and which incidentally is called The Tub. That the character I played in that, Joel Hayden, was an extremely hard role, uh, a really tortured character, and I intentionally lost a lot of weight, chain-smoked, didn't eat that much, got on the piss, <laughs> um, and uh, I think because I was young and hungry, I probably went a bit too far. I went, you know, because people were always talking about method acting and you know, what is method acting? And I was like, well, I'm just going to become this character, which, look, in, you know, in retrospect, is probably a little bit nuts. Um, I should have just acted more, you know. But that was challenging because the, ca the character was so tortured and so far removed from who I actually am. Uh, and the director's intention was to have this character and have people say, who's that, when I'm in the room, not knowing it's me. In actual fact, that did happen because when, by the time we did the posters... I remember uh, for the first screening, I had a few flyers. I had flyers sitting in the, in the car, and I had two girlfriends that I picked up to go out to one of the screenings, and I gave them the flyer, and they picked it up, and they said, oh, who's that? And it was me. Um, so I felt like, oh, I've, you know, I've, 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 <laughs> I've, I've succeeded. Um, but it was extremely hard because it's such a tortured character, a guy who's, uh, whose wife is uh, cheating on him and... Uh, in, well, I'm not going to talk about the plot, but um, just a very, a very hard, tortured character, you know. Um, basically comes home and finds that his wife's cheated on him with a bodybuilder who's lying on top of her in a bathtub and has actually trapped her inside a bathtub. So the only way for her to get out is if he was to actually start to hack up the body. So it was, it was a pretty full-on story. It was pretty gruesome. That was, that was a really hard role.